Um, yep. My name is J.R. Alawi, founder and CEO of Iris. Did you want to make an introduction? Oh, I, you, I think you just did it. Okay. Um, we'll be talking today about the rise of ambient intelligence and emotionally intelligent devices. Um, in 2008, we started a company that does face analytics, mainly for advertising, and uh, pivoted uh, a few years later into a software-based company that reads people's facial micro-expressions in real time using deep learning architecture such as convolutional neural networks. And I'll be talking a little bit about how this applies to AR or can be applied to AR as an industry. Um, so CNNs or convolutional neural networks, convnets or deep neural networks is a kind of an architecture for image processing that imitates human recognition. Um, over the years, we collected, just to kind of uh, imitate the natural environment, we collected a, uh, a number of um, data sets, um, some of which uh, revolve around collecting um, you know, images and videos of five major ethnic groups, uh, four genders, sorry, two genders, four age groups, uh, four different lighting conditions, and their supervised and unsupervised um, uh, environments with the use of multiple cameras, uh, 3D time of flight or structured light cameras, et cetera. Um, to the right, you can see kind of a matrix of how vast our data sets can be. If you take, for example, a race, for example, Asian, Japanese, um, adult, male, that's smiling in a posed environment with low light conditions and their head poses at minus 30 degrees, for example, that's kind of one combination. Um, we collected over a million images uh, as a result of this. So <clears throat> thanks to this data set, um, um, we, we, we created what, what we call a machine emotional vocabulary, which is basically the underlying platform uh, behind the technology. And so um, um, it, it is something that allows immediate increase in accuracy based on markets, but also environment. Environment is very important for AR. For example, if the accuracy today is at, say, 94% for the very specific Japanese market, um, what used to take us six months before to train the algorithm in order to increase that accuracy by a point or, or 2% uh, takes us only a couple of days now. Um, we basically go out to that territory, collect as many data sets as possible, manually annotate them, um, feed them to the, into the algorithm, and, uh, and automatically, within a matter of days, we have a, uh, an increased accuracy in that, in that market. Today, the software provides an entire suite of face analytics from all seven universal emotions, and they have been universalized for the last three decades, at least. Um, that includes also face tracking, 3D head pose, face recognition, uh, multi-phase detection, gender, age group, eye tracking, and a number of engagements metrics that depend on the actual type of application and environment. For example, in the automotive space, um, some of the engagements metrics revolve around drowsiness, attention, pain, irritation, um, sleepiness, and a number of things. Um, in case of video analytics, or just video um, interaction. Um, some of the metrics can include valence, uh, emotion lift, etc. cetera. Mood indicators revolve around uh, positive or negative mood, so it's kind of a sentiment analysis type of thing. So because of deep learning, because of the confidence, we believe that uh, uh, we have um, uh, made justice to the technology. There is a number of emotion recognition companies out there. But the problem is, if the software cannot be embeddable, um, it will actually not reach the masses. So the first and foremost, uh, the software is ultra light, lightweight embeddable. Then it's highly accurate, obviously, because of the number of iterations, the deep learning, the training, the data sets that we collected, et cetera. 
And lastly, it is race and environment customizable. So that helps us transform human machine interface, augmented reality, and of course, virtual reality as well. Um, it is the architecture, so the software is like the architecture that allows the unique advantage of embedding vision technologies um, into the machines and devices that we use every day, including the machines that are, or devices that are currently used for AR. Uh, these are just some examples, uh, whether it's in glasses or video or camera or gaming. All of these devices and industries are prone to be using some sort of AR um, in the near future. This segues me to um, speaking a little bit about ambient intelligence. The, the overall purpose for a lot of technologies, whether they are vision technologies or text or or, or whatever they are, it is really to create this ambient intelligence around us, which basically um, uh, is, um, can be defined as electronic environments that are sensitive and, res and responsive to the presence of people so that these devices can pr provide mm, customizable experiences uh, seamlessly and passively. Uh, pervasive computing is kind of a, you know, what comes after um, ambient intelligence. So there is a number of rules for that to happen. Uh, if you wanted to have, for example, a device that uh, has, uh, you know, um, augmented reality uh, piece of software, you do have also face analytics, including emotions and things like that for interaction. You have to have the technology embedded um, contextually aware, uh, personalized to that experience or to the environment or to the user, adaptive and lastly, anticipatory. Um, a couple of things, quick technical. Uh, a lot of times when we talk about uh, embedding software or adding it you know, um, into the AR world, um, a lot of people think that all processing has to be local, so either on like a mobile SDK or, or desktop SDK. It's not always the case. Um, you can also have a cloud API or cloud process in which what we offer. Our cloud API here is EmoView API that provides just near time processing um, as well. Uh, there are a number of input modalities. Obviously, it's a computer vision software, so camera streams, videos, images, or image sequences. And uh, that's pretty much it. How are we doing on time? Just about out. All right. Thank you, Modar. So, Wes. While you guys are asking for questions, I have a quick demo that I'll just take like less than 30 seconds just to kind of show you how everything works in a real world. Yep, so do we have questions for Modar? And please prepare your questions. So while that's running, quick question, how much does video bandwidth codec efficiency impact the result outcomes? Um, is it highly correlated to the, you know, depth of the stream or is it, as the stream gets lower resolution, do you lose a lot of low value? Correct. Uh, the higher the resolution, the better the results are. Um, do you have a correlation? Um, yeah, obviously. So, so, so the, uh, there's a lot of compression that happens in the background, especially when we're talking about the cloud API. Um, generally, the higher the resolution, the better it is. 720p and up is, is always good. Go ahead. Questions for Modar? Um, so as, as you're talking, um, you can see that dancing through a range of, of things. And obviously, um, speech, a lot of the, the facial structures of speech map to other emotions, but that's not the emotion that you're expressing. That's just a, a, a function of form and speech. Mm, so the emotion we're, we're, just, we're talking about is facial micro-expressions or facial expressions only. Uh, there, there is a small component. There's a company called Beyond Verbal um, out of Israel. Uh, they do speech emotion or emotion based on speech. Uh, um, that's I, I think I was saying the other way around that. So uh, aren't you dancing, by speaking, aren't you dancing through a range of emotions that you capture from your face? I'm sorry. Like say that again? Correct, exactly. So these things do not apply um, 
to when you are speaking. For example, this is a software running real life, I'm speaking, and it does not necessarily mean I'm fearful. <laughs> but that's, that's, uh, that's, that's a great point. We have time for one more quick question. Go ahead. Can you tell the difference between a fake smile and a real one? Yeah, not necessarily. So the software is a computer vision software. It sees what it sees. And so if it sees a smile, it interprets it as a, as a smile. Um, here's a, so here's a quick suite of analytics. You have attention, eye openness, positive mood. And so you have at the bottom all seven universal emotions. Is it joy, surprise? You ask for surprise, right? <laughs> <laughs> Disgust, sadness. <laughs> Sweet bloody, well, puppy face. Fear and anger. So it's an acting trainer. <laughs> yeah, so if, if I always say if this doesn't work out, I can uh, always go to Hollywood and kind of. <laughs> All right, thank you guys. It's been a great audience. Thank you. Modar Alawi, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.